Every now and then when I'm filming a tutorial, I'll use a shortcut and I always get a comment going, wow, I didn't know you could do that in Construct. So today, here's a list of things that you probably didn't know you could do inside of Construct. I love using add-ons, they're really, really useful. But when you're trying to send a project to someone, they're required to install that add-on as well. Easy fix for this is just to click anywhere, go into your project properties, and you can go to this option called bundle add-ons. Now when they open your project, it will install the necessary add-ons for them, so they don't need to do that themselves. Contract files are just zip files, just disguised. So if we do show more options, we go to 7-zip and extract files, we can actually get all of the files out, open the folder, and we can see all the files inside our folder. This is handy for two purposes. One, it allows you to get your files out if your file has been corrupted. Two, thanks to the option to open project folders, even if your file does get corrupted, there's a good chance you can save it this way. In the animation editor, you can right click and save your favorite colors. This means you can use them for later and they will apply from project to project. When creating animations, it can be quite hard to redraw the same animation again. So you can click at the top here to apply an onion skin and this will show you the previous animations. You can also toggle this a bit further so you can show the last frame, the last two frames, or the last two and the next two frames. When trying to come up for a hitbox for your object, you can actually right click and you can guess the polygon shape. This will not be perfect, but it will give you a starting point where you can then change the last couple of points to finish this off with. If your image point isn't center, just right click, go to quick assign and tap middle. This will save you doing all the math calculations in your head. We all know that we can hold shift when resizing an object to keep the aspect ratio the same. However, do you know if you hold control, you can resize by the origin point in the center as opposed to resizing by the corner. Some objects can be previewed. You can do this by left clicking and previewing the object. However, what you might not know is that you could also right click, view, and you can start all previews at the same time. This is useful for stuff like the water effect, which you can't actually preview using the properties bar. You can only preview using this method. You can right click on any object, hit copy, go into a new project, right click on the object folder and hit paste paste the object in. This will take any behaviors, any animations, and bring them into your new project. I do recommend saving before you do this, as sometimes it crashes when you copy and paste. You can use the keyboard shortcut of F5 to play your project straight away, and this will play it from the current layout that you're currently on, or you can actually use F4 instead, and this will always start from the first layout. If you ever want to test out your game on an app, you can actually use the drop down and hit the remote preview. This will then generate a QR code that you can scan. This is really useful for quick fixes that you don't want to necessarily build a new app each time for. Clicking on the drop down arrow allows you to go into a debug layout. This will give you more information about the variables and how the game's running. A lot of you probably know this already. However, what you might not know is that when playing a certain game, you can actually hit the save icon to save the current state of your game. This is just really, really useful, so if you get to a later part and you die or you want to test a certain thing, you can load the previous layout without having to play the whole first part of the game again. You can actually use the properties bar to perform maps calculations. So if I want to make this object twice the size, I can just write times two, and it will times it by two for me. You can also add, subtract, and divide. Menus inside a construct used to be really annoying. That's because even if the menu was invisible, you could still interact with it and press buttons like exit or last checkpoint. However, a feature that was added a few updates ago was if you click on any layer, you can untick this initially interactive, which means we cannot now interact with it, whether it's visible or invisible, and you can do this via code as well. This cube has a width, a height, and a Z height of 120. Despite this, however, the Z height is much greater or looks far greater than the other two. This because in Construct, we actually times the Z height by 5.4. To fix this, just click anywhere, go to Project Properties, and change the Z axis scale from Normalized to Regular. And now 120 in the Z height is the same as 120 everywhere else. When making 3D games, you might want to change your field of view. This can be done by going into Project Properties, and there's a nice option here called Field of View. You might not have seen this before, and this is because it only appears once you've added the 3D camera object. When layering lots of objects on top of each other, like we've got in this tower, it can be quite hard to select the exact object that you want. Easy fix for this is just to right click, go to Z order and open the Z order bar. 
This will now show you all objects that are overlapping this particular object here. You can also double click on any object and it will flash to show you where it is. From here, you can then move that particular object or change its properties. Some projects have a lot of code and it's quite hard to navigate all this code. And there's lots of different solutions that Construct does to help fix this. One of them is to right click and toggle bookmarks. And I recommend finding all the key bits of code that you have to keep going back to inside your code and toggling bookmarks with all of them. Once you've done that, you can go to menu, view, bars, and enable the bookmarks bar. You can then put this somewhere that you're able to find it. And now when you double click on any of these, they'll take you to that portion of code really, really quickly. Next is something that I only discovered today and want to play around with a lot more. If you click on any object, we've got a car here, it's got some fuel, it's got some stats. We can actually scroll down to the option that says template. Currently it says none, I'm gonna create a new template and I'm gonna call it car one. Nothing too crazy going on. However, if we click on this other car, scroll down to the template mode and change it to replica and change it to car one, it's now gonna copy all the stats that we set up in this first car. More importantly, if we change any of these stats, it will highlight them red to show that it's different from the original template. If we then want to change any of these back, we can right click and use the one from the template nice and quickly. And this I imagine is gonna be really great for setting up multiple enemies that have slight variation and you can change them in the templates really, really quickly. Now we've already talked about copying objects, but we can also copy code. Just click on the first bit of code, hold shift, to click the second part of the code, right click and copy, then go into your new project, right click and paste. Just keep in mind if your code mentions any objects, they must be added. If they mention any variables, they should be added as well beforehand. So copy your objects first, then copy your code after. As mentioned earlier, some games can have a lot of code. One method for getting rid of all this code is to actually have multiple event sheets. So I can right click, add a new event sheet. I'm gonna call this one camera. I can then go into my code and I can take all of this camera code, I know there's loads of it here, put it into the camera event sheet and paste it here. The most important part is just go back to your original code, right click and then include event sheets. This means this event sheet now consists of all of this code plus our new camera code. The touch object also has a gyroscope and accelerometer in it. Now the code you're seeing on the board was actually meant to be a video a long time ago, I decided it wasn't worth making it but I'll leave the project in the description if you do want to try it for yourself. Inside the system conditions, there's a special condition called isn't preview. This code only executes if the project is running in the preview pane rather than the exported project. This means you can put in little cheats into your game to help when developing it. For instance, in the zombie shooter, I'm giving myself 100 health, so I'm less likely to die. However, when I export the game, this code will no longer work and they'll go back to the usual health. Next, we're on the main menu, I'm gonna hit the menu button. You can actually install Construct as an app. Once you hit install, this is working on Chrome. You get actually a version of Construct that you can use. You can right click and you can pin to taskbar and you can even right click and open your Construct file straight into this new version. Now it's still running on web, it's not its own downloaded program, so you still need the internet to use it, but it is a nice alternative than having to go to a new web page each time. By clicking menu and then hitting settings, there are loads of different settings you should be aware of. First of all, you can actually change to a mobile view. This is more handy if you're on a smaller screen or a tablet, and it means that you can actually have the bars hidden, and when you bring one bar out, the other one disappears. It's a little bit more friendly for those tablet screens. Also in the settings, you can find the dark theme. If you're tired of always losing your work inside a construct, maybe turn on save and back up. You can turn this on for a certain amount of time and you can choose where it's going to be backed up manually. So if your computer accidentally crashes, you can always use your recent backup. If you're creating a project that has lots of objects, you might want to change your GPU preferences from normal to high performance. If you go to menu, about, you can scroll down and there's an option called browser will persist storage. Mine's turned on already, but essentially what it means is it's going to keep your recent projects loaded, it's going to keep you signed in and it's going to keep any add-ons you've installed. Without this, sometimes it will do a refresh and you'll lose all of that and you have to sign back in or install your add-ons once again. And the final thing that I want to show you is if you click on your folder at the top, right click and go down to tools, you can view your project statistics. 
for the ultimate bragging rights amongst your Construct friends. Hopefully today you've learned something new that you didn't know you could do inside of Construct. Comment your favourite down below and I'll see you in the next video.